Yeah. And I, I know why people And I, and I would had... like to take it from there, if I may. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Please do. And I love you, Oprah, and I love exactly what you said, because I feel the same way on, on a lot of aspects of my life. But there is that very aggressive aspect of my life that I have a very specific face for. Uh, you know, I've been in organized sports all my life from um, professional, well, not professional ice hockey, but I've played in tournaments and people generally think of ice hockey as a predominantly white sport, which it is, yeah. but I've played in certain areas where I know that people are, one, defensive for me to be present with them. So I know that if I act the way that I act in the boxing gym with predominantly um, black and Hispanic aggressive men, I, you know, I, there's, a, there's a different face that I put on in that environment. It's a very accountable environment where you have to watch what you say and how you speak or you will be held accountable physically. So there's a certain face I wear there and there's a certain face I wear in that locker room surrounded by certain people who have very definitive opinions about black people, but they have to respect me because of my skill level there. And then there's a very different face that I wear with my children in these very expensive schools that I have them in. And <laughs> there's a very specific face that I wear as a celebrity. And I think the film is indicative of the faces that black men had to wear in this time, specifically in the South, and specifically as domesticated and professional people. And then there was also other faces that uh, David Oyelowo's character had to, you know, wear around people that he obviously, at some point, had a disconnect with, with the storyline with Yaya's character uh, being that of the Black Panther. So the black male in this time of the civil rights movement had to wear many, many, many faces that we have been talking about for the past few days. And I think the Trayvon Martin situation was another thing that sparked another reminder that we do need to wear certain faces that represent a mentality indicative of our surrounding that Terrence spoke very wonderfully about yesterday in terms of if Trayvon had recognized the face that he needed to wear at that particular moment, it might have been a very different outcome. So I think that, you know, even though we've talked a lot of wonderful statements being made about historical times and presidents and whatnot, but I think what attracted me to this movie was the duality of the existence of the African-American male through this time period that was so wonderfully detailed by Mr. Lee Daniels mm. in the civil rights movement. Um, mm. The relationship, the face that the butlers got to wear around Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, yeah. and then the very different face they had to wear around Nixon. So faces are a theme in this movie that can't be ignored or slighted and I think it's something that even though we all wish that we can be as open as certain personalities, right. we as African Americans still deal with this very real situation that are the many faces that we're required to wear. It's not, it's not, I don't mean to, but something that Lee and I have spoke about several times was the whole, yes, the duality of it all. And I think Lenny and I have spoken about this too. The, my mom, um, who is Irish American, my father who's African American, and actually Oprah, I don't know if you remember, we did a show about this. Yeah, we did. And there was, a sh uh, there was some young interracial, well, uh, we were taught to call ourselves interracial when I was little, but biracial children, multiracial children, I'm not sure what the correct terminology is now. But I think this is gonna be healthy for kids to be able to grow up to see this movie um, because I mean, we were talking about it before. There, there is something that's so, it's deep when, you know, you're, you're, you, if you look at these times, you say, well, how glamorous that was, how that must have been for certain people. And then, you, and then I always say to myself, because my mom was very active in the civil rights movement, but she was the one who had to go and get the house when they were to buy a house wherever they wanted to buy a house because my dad wanted to kind of assimilate and, and, and give his children a chance to you know, get to another 
level and not grow up like he did, um, you know, in Bronx, Shed, Harlem, and different places with his mom who came from down south and migrated upwards. So it was, it's, I think this is something that, you know, you're showing such, it's, it's just so um, brave on a, it's the same bravery you had and you always have in your work, you know what I mean? So I just, I, I just want to say personally, thank you for, for doing it.